What is up, what is up, and welcome back to another episode of Blood and Beer, the show where we talk blood sport and we drink beer. I'm your host, Matt, and as always, we got some UFC to talk. We'll uh, we'll talk a little Bellator, PFL, some PFL tour, and uh, upcoming fights. Today, we got to pick them for you. Brady vs. Burns, the UFC fight night. It's an awesome fight night card, especially for being at the Apex, and we're going to go over all that, make you some money. You know the deal with the pick'ems. We do a 1,000 up throw bets all over the card however we want to spread it that's how we spread it and we see how we do we're up about 100 on the year 120 actually but we're looking to bounce back we were doing a lot better earlier this year we had a couple off weeks and then we uh then i had to take a couple weeks off for the farm and other things so we're back with the pickums with the money makers and that's what i'm here for like i said brady versus burns and then we're going to get into some other stuff uh the bellator champion series that's coming up this weekend as well <coughs> Damn them burps. I had some libations before we started airing, so uh, that's why that is. But yeah, Bellator Championship Series, that's on this weekend as well. We'll get into that, the UFC Fight Night card. But first, the beer we're sipping on, the first beer we're sipping on is going to be Royal Crush, a juicy IPA. So we'll try this out. We've been cracking some schlattes, some bush schlattes prior to this, so we're going to try some... uh, some of this Royal Crush and see how it is. I like juicy IPAs. Oh, that's an easy drink. <clears throat> tastes kind of like uh, tastes kind of like pine saw or maybe Lysol, lemon scented pice, lime saw, lemon scented Lysol. That's a that's a, that's how it tastes. How how that smells. So a little bit like it might kill me, but overall not too bad. <coughs> God damn these burps. All right, these pickums brought to you by nobody because we're sponsored by nobody. This is just off my dome. First fight we got for you on this Sean Brady versus Gilbert Durino Burns fight night card. We're coming at you with Gigamantis Ramaskas. This guy should have been in the Ultimate Fighter finale or at least had a chance to fight Myron, Myron Santos to get there. He's fun as hell. Dude loves to trade, and he's got a chin. He's been dropped before in the Ultimate Fighter, but he's just an exciting fighter. He's a little wild, but dangerous in the submission. He's a tall, lanky dude for 145. He's taking on Nathan Fletcher. Fletcher, minus 130 favorite. Dude's got really good wrestling, decent submission game. I don't see that being a problem for Gigamantis. He's pretty well well, uh, well rounded on the ground. He's going to be fine there. In the stand-up, I give Giga the... The uh, edge, he's got that dog in him. Dude will just sit there in the phone booth and throw. You don't see that a lot from dudes that have the reins that they do. And I just don't think Nathan Fletcher has that striking. So, Nathan's good. Nathan lost, I think, to, uh, oh, I can't, Chris Padilla. Chris Padilla in his UFC debut. So, or no, that, I don't know who the fuck he lost to, but he's he's 0-1 in the UFC both unproven I'm going dog or pass Gigamantis plus 110 50 bucks gets you 105 back let's make some money right there easy dog pick next up Andre Petrosky I love this dude another ultimate fighter alumni he's taking on Dylan Budka Petrosky minus 350 favorite to 265 plus for uh, Budka I don't like those odds I really like Petrosky in this one I just don't see where we're going to make our money. I don't want to put 100 bucks on him, and I don't want to put 500 on him because Petrosky, he's been knocked out by someone's hip before, so you just never know. Might sprinkle some money on the uh, on the submissions once those odds come out. Stateside submission for Petrosky because he does have a vicious ground game, but we'll have to wait and see. No pick on that one. Next up, Jacqueline Amarim taking on Vanessa Demopoulos. And... <clears throat> Minus 330 for Amarim. Surprised the shit out of me because Vanessa Demopoulos, she's not the most skilled fighter, but she's always game. All her fights seem really close, or she's dominating them, at least in my opinion when I'm watching her. Amarim, she's got a good submission game. She's got good Muay Thai. I think that uh, she's going to try to get it to the ground, but Demopoulos, she has really good wrestling, and she's been uh, talking about this power. She's got one-punch KO power now, so... If we see that, that's a huge dog pick, but I'm not going for it. Plus 255 for Vanessa. I'd like to throw that money down, but got it spread out other places throughout the card. So, <clears throat> god damn. 
I see a dog. I see a real dog shot in that one, but I just don't know enough about Jacqueline Amarim. Her uh, her competition she's fought so far isn't the best of the UFC. Not that Vanessa Demopoulos is, but Vanessa has been around the block. So I'm just staying out of that one. Women's MMA with these big odds, they it concerns me. You look at what happened with um, Molly McCann and, and that girl from Fighting Nerds. Like a minus 330 favorite got fucking mopped. Got the floor mopped with her face. So we're going to stay out of that one. Next up, we're not going to stay out of this one. Andre Lima is a minus 190 favorite. Taking on Felipe Dos Santos. Plus 160. Dos Santos. He's only lost one fight to Manel Cop, And it was a fucking barn burner. He took on no... No weeks notice, no time notice. This guy went out there, got a split decision loss to Manel Cop, but it was a fun ass fight. He brought it to him. He's taking on Felipe Dos Santos, undefeated kickboxer. Dude's a beast. Er, he's taking on Andre Lima. I'm sorry, undefeated kickboxer. Lima's a beast, but he's real patient. He likes to sit back and throw. And I think Dos Santos is going to fuck him up because he's like a Charles Oliveira. He's in your face. He's always marching forward. He doesn't care what the, what you throw at him. He's going to take it and keep going. Dude's got a chin. Dude's got a fucking motor on him. And he's just that front kick to the body. The He's got power. He's got Muay Thai. I like the dog in this. At plus 160, Felipe Dos Santos. We're going to drop 150 on him to get 390 back. Let's make some fucking money here. The dogs are barking. <laughs> dogs are barking. Barking, baby. And then we have Isaac Dolgarian, minus 1,800 over Brandon Marat, plus 1,100. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not even talking about this fight. Dolgarian could lose. He's got one loss on his record already, but I don't, I'm not interested in these fucking long shots. I'm not playing the lottery here. We're trying to make some money. Get the fuck out of here with those odds. Next up, we got Ryan Superman Span taking on OSP Ovin St. Pru. <coughs> God damn, these burps just don't stop coming. Can't believe this is buried on the prelims. First off, two legends of the of the middleweight game. Ryan Spann, dude's got crazy power. His guillotine's fucking nasty. Athletic as fuck. Has been a little chinny. Has been caught in some submissions of his own in the past. And with that guillotine threat that he's got, sets up perfect for the Von Pru choke. OSP's signature move. You get yourself caught in a guillotine, and what you do, you lay that shoulder over their neck, and you just, it's like a head and arm triangle, but it, it's the weirdest submission ever, but it's so nice when he gets it off. So that's a real threat to come back, getting that Von Pru choke, the Von Flu for OSP. I don't see it happening. He's a little chinny, and Ryan Spann has superpower. The dude can knock, he knocked out Dominic Reyes with a jab. I know Reyes is chinny, but Ovin St. Pru is super chinny. He's 40 years old, he's been around the block, and he hates getting hit anymore. I like 200 bucks on Ryan Span. I just think two, you know, 200 only nets you 60 bucks profit. 260s to come back on that. But I just I like Span in this one. I don't see a way he loses. I feel confident putting that 200 down and making that money back. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're getting ready to move on to the main card. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right. Next up. We got Rong Zhu, road to the UFC winner. He's a minus, let me see what these odds are here. Hated a minus 270 favor over Chris Padilla, undefeated in the UFC, one submission victory. Uh, dude's pretty good. Rong Zhu, he's been in the UFC before. He's still young, only 24, but he was 1-2 and two in his last stint. And I'm really not high on these uh, road to the UFC guys. They just don't think they had the toughest competition. I think Padilla, he's a better wrestler. I think his striking is going to be par for par with this guy, with Rongju. Rongju, just nothing stands out for me for this guy. I like 100 bucks on Padilla to get 320 back. He's a plus 220 dog, and we want that fucking money. Give me that fucking money, baby. Chris Padilla, 100 on him. Get us 320. I'm going fast. I'm going fast. <sighs> Got to slow down. But we're about to bust out our second beer of the day. We haven't had this in a long time where we uh, get to the next one. I'll introduce it after we get to it. <sighs> right now we got 500 on the board. We got 500 on the board. We got Chris Padilla over Rongju. We got Ryan Spann over OSP. We got uh, Gigamantis from Oscars. We got Felipe Dos Santos. So those are the four picks of the 500 we got so far. Next up, we got Trevor Peak, 
minus 125 favorite over Yanel Ashmuz. Both these guys I'm not real high on. Trevor Peaks got horrible form, but he's got a lot of power. He throws clubbing shots. He like his hands are up here and he just fucking boom, boom, boom. Like hammer fists. He throws hammer fist punches. It's weird. Works for him though. He gets some knockouts. He also loses some fights. He gasses out. I just think the upside for Peak in this one is a lot higher than for Ashmuz. Ashmuz, fucking boring fighter. I don't think he's very interesting. I think he's just a point fighter looking for control in the fight, and I think I don't think he's got the skills to take Peak out. I don't know, it's more of a feel for me, and USA over Israel, I know we're not enemies, but I'm enemies with everybody that's not the USA and Russia, baby, kidding, 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 I don't fuck with Russia, I'm Irish, <laughs> alright, <laughs> that was a bad one, but 100 bucks on Peak gets us 185 back, let's go, 100 bucks on Trevor Peak. next up, Matt Schnell versus Alessandro Costa, Plus 390, minus 520. Again, get the fuck out of here. Matt Schnell's too chinny to bet that dog preys on him. He's a beast. He puts on some fun fights, and but he also goes out there, fucking pedal to the metal, and gets caught, gets dropped, gets fucked. He's done. I don't see a world where he gets it, gets a victory. I just think Costa's getting a violent knockout in this. Great spot to put it. The feature fight on the main event, as far as that, you know, third fight on the main card. I don't know. That's a good fight to put on there. Not a good fight to bet, so keep me the fuck out of it. Next fight, though, Kyle Nelson taking on Steve Garcia, and I love this fight. It's going to be fun as shit. I might get it wrong, but I got Kyle Nelson in it. Steve Garcia, he's got four TKOs in a row, four KOs in a row. Dude's been on fire, but this guy is undisciplined. He misses weight every now and then. He uh, yeah, misses weight. Sometimes he comes in, looks a little gassy. Hasn't fought the level of competition Kyle Nelson has. Kyle Nelson's coming off a first-round TKO of Bill Aljayo. He's on a three-fight win streak as well. I love Kyle Nelson in this. I think he's going to swarm him. He's going to pressure him. Steve Garcia wants to stay on the outside. He likes to bang. He, he's okay with it, but he's got to be drawn into that fight. I think Kyle Nelson can just step on the gas early and put him out of there. I like Kyle Nelson. 100 bucks on him gets you 160 back, or gets you 260 back. So let's fucking go with more dogs, baby. Dogs all day on this pod. We're getting dog prices. And especially this next fight. Shouldn't be a dog. Why are they a dog? What's proven to you that Jessica Andrade should be a dog? A plus 240 dog against Natalia Silva, who hasn't fought fucking anybody. She beat Jasmine Jazz Davisius. That's all she's beaten in the UFC as far as big names. And that's not a big name. That's a fucking mid-carter, middle-of-the-road talent. Unranked, I think. She's undefeated in the UFC. But Andrade is just the ultimate gatekeeper. She's plus 240. What the fuck? She's fought at 145, 35, 25, 15. She was the 15 belt holder. I think she's best at 25, to be honest. And that's what this fight's taking place at. She got Amanda Lemos with a standing head and arm triangle. She gets one-punch knockouts of women all the time. I just don't see a world where Andrade should be a plus 240 dog. And because of that, we're going to be putting 150 on Andrade. Get us two or get us five ten back. Big wins over here. Big wins in the chat, baby. Let's go. Dogs barking all day. Oh, oh! <laughs> all right. And then before we move on to the main event, we got this next beer because I just finished that one. This is uh, from the Destil, the Steel Brewing Company. Distilled Brewery, Tour Bus, Double Dry Hopped, Hazy IPA, Brewed with Citra and Mosaic Hops, Support Flavor, Boycott Bland. So that's what we're fucking rolling with for this last fight, which is Burns versus Brady. Gilbert Burns, plus 155 dog. Sean Brady, minus 185 favorite. We got 150 to throw left on this card, and this fight's going to be fucking awesome. Both these dudes, world class on the ground. Gilbert Burns, gold medalist ADCC. Sean Brady, just a fucking monster in wrestling, monster in jiu-jitsu. And the dude's back is like a fucking turtle shell, strong as shit. So his wrestling's on par. He has been knocked out by Bilal Muhammad, which how the fuck does that happen? You might be asking. It happened in Abu Dhabi. Sean Brady, it seemed like jet lag caught up with him. And Bilal just has great game plans for everybody. He exploits your weakness. Gilbert Burns isn't that same smart fighter. Gilbert Burns will go and trade with strikers, go to the ground with wrestlers. I think that in this one, I, I like Brady in it. I just think Burns, 38, he's getting older. He's been hurt. He's slowing down. Sean Brady, 
there's a chance Burns knocks him out because Burns has way better striking than um, Bilal Muhammad. I just don't see it happening. I don't think that Burns is going to have that same game plan that uh, that Bilal had. So I like Brady in this. 150 gets you 230 back. Only 80 bucks net. I don't love that, but it is what it is. So before we uh, do a roundup of all the picks we got for you, all the money we threw down and all the money we're about to lose, we're going to try this beer out, this Destile Brewing Company Tour Bus, the 2021 Gold Award for Hazy and Juicy IPAs, by the way, whatever the fuck that means. That's, that's a lot better than the last one. Tastes a lot more like a beer. All right, but the picks we got. Gigamantis, 50 on him. Felipe Dos Santos, 150. Ryan Spann, 200. Chris Padilla, 100. Trevor Peak, 100. Uh, Kyle Nelson, 100. Jessica Andrade, 150. And Sean Brady, 150. And then as we're wrapping up, UFC's announced a lot of fights. Shara Bullet and Magomedov, he's on UFC 308, taking on Armin Petrosian. Um, we're also going to have John Jones versus Stipe Miocic on November 16th, UFC 309. Uh, Jonathan Martinez versus Marcus McGee has been announced as well. A lot of fights from UFC coming out. But, you know, we'll see if they stick stick when they uh, when we get to it. All right, sorry about that brief intermission we had there. Had to take a piss. I don't know if you could saw me struggling over here, just fucking, I'm about to piss my pants. We got it out. Bellator, Champion Series, coming up this weekend also, going head-to-head -head with UFC. Big mistake for Bellator, but another mistake in a, in a line of just failures by the PFL Tour company. Horribly managed. Don Davis, what the fuck you doing? You think you're going to be worth $2 billion in two years? You say, <clears throat> I don't think you're going to exist in two years. Which sucks, because I love the PFL model. You just suck at running a company, signing all these people that don't fight in your tournament for millions of dollars or 500000 a show. Just fucking nuts. Anyways, like I said, we'll do an episode one day, probably soon, maybe this week, of what all's wrong with PFL and how I'll fix it. But that's not today's episode. PFL hates Bellator, Bur wants to bury their champions, doesn't want anyone to see them. That's why they're going head-to-head -head with UFC. This weekend on Saturday, 8 p.m. on HBO Max, we got Usman Nurmagomedov taking on Alexander Shabali. Uh, or, yeah, Shabali. It's going to be a great fight. Both guys, beast. Both have great wrestling. Both have great striking. It's going to be fun. Khabib's gym's taking on another uh, Russian Dagestani wrestler in Shabali. But it's going to be Usman that takes the win. And he says after he mauls this dude, after he beats the fuck out of him, Khabib's going to put the belt around him. Just another Namagamadov with the belt. We got Usman, Umar's next. We got Islam, Khabib's had it. It's, it's a dynasty they got over there at AKA from these Dagestanis. But that fight's going to be awesome. Other than that, the card fucking sucks. We get to see Lorenz Larkin. He's fighting on there, and then so is uh, Diego or Douglas Lima, former Bellator champion. But other than that, card fucking sucks. And why does it suck? Because PFL hates Bellator. Does not want to build their fighters up. Doesn't want to bring their best guys to the tournament. They just fucking hate them. So, it is what it is. We'll air out all our grievances soon. Maybe this week, because I'm getting just so fed up with all the bullshit coming from PFL. Um, so, yeah. That's what we have for you today. Thanks for tuning in to Blood and Beer. Um, this is Matt. Long episode again. But, I appreciate you. Hope you make some money on these picks. Let me know what you think of my picks. And let me know what your picks are in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, and I appreciate you tuning in as always.